Every single eukaryotic cell contains the nucleus. The nucleus is a membrane enclosed organelle that contains, stores, protects, and expresses most of the genetic information that is found in our cell, the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid. The reason I say most and not all is because actually a small portion, a small portion of the DNA is found in the mitochondria, which is another membrane enclosed organelle found in our body and we'll discuss that when we look at the mitochondria and its structure. In this lecture we're going to focus on the structure and the composition of the nucleus of the eukaryotic cell. So let's begin by discussing the envelope, the region that basically encloses our nucleus. This is known as the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope. So just like the entire eukaryotic cell contains our cell membrane, the nucleus contains a membrane known as the nuclear membrane. And the nuclear membrane, just like the actual cell membrane, also consists of a lipid bilayer. So we have an inner as well as an outer region of the membrane that basically looks something like this. So we have the outer membrane region that consists of the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails and we have the inner membrane region that also consists of our hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails. And the space, the fluid space between these two regions, the outer and the inner membrane, is known as the perinuclear space. Now, throughout the entire nuclear envelope, throughout the entire nuclear membrane, we have very tiny holes known as nuclear pores that basically allow materials to move into the nucleus as well as outside the nucleus. And we'll discuss exactly what the nuclear pore is in just a moment. Now, the outer membrane is actually physically connected to the membrane of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And this is important because when we synthesize our RNA, ribosomal RNA, we have to have a quick way to transport our RNA from the nucleus to our endoplasmic reticulum. And that's why they are connected. So the inner membrane, so this is the outer membrane that is found uh, on the side of our uh, cytoplasm. But the inner membrane is found on the side of the fluid found inside our nucleus. And the fluid inside the nucleus is known as the nucleoplasm. So the nucleoplasm is the fluid inside the nucleus. The cytoplasm is this entire region found between the cell membrane and our nucleus clear membrane. Now, the inner membrane is also covered by a network of proteins known as intermediate filaments that extend throughout the entire nucleus as shown by these extensions here. Now, these network or this network of extensions of intermediate filaments found inside the nucleus is known as the nuclear lamina. And the nuclear lanima basically plays the role of stabilizing the structure of the nucleus as a whole. And they are also involved in gene expression. Now, let's return to what a nuclear pore is. So earlier we said that the entire nuclear membrane contains these holes known as nuclear pores. But what exactly is a nuclear pore? Well, a nuclear pore is not exactly an empty hole. Nuclear pores are actually protein complexes that extend throughout the entire nuclear membrane. And these protein complexes help transport biomolecules such as RNA, ribosomal units, ribosomal proteins, as well as polymerase between our nucleoplasm and our cytosol, the cytoplasm, this region here of our eukaryotic cell. Now, a polymerase is basically a type of enzyme, a type of protein that plays an important role when we translate, replicate, or when we transcribe our DNA molecules. And we'll discuss that when we discuss replication, translation, as well as transcription. Now, let's move on to a region of the nucleus known as the nucleolus.
So at the heart of any nucleus of any eukaryotic cell is a region known as the nucleolus and it takes up about 25% of space found inside that nucleus. Now this is a very important section because within this section we have RNA molecules and proteins that are responsible for synthesizing our RNA or ribosomal RNA that is needed to create ribosomes found within the endoplasmic reticulum as well as inside our cytosol of the cell. Finally, let's discuss the composition of DNA inside the nucleus. So earlier we said the entire purpose of the nucleus is to store, protect, and express our genetic information, the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid. Now the problem is the linear version of DNA is extremely long. In fact, if we take a single DNA molecule found inside the human cell and we extend it in a linear fashion, it will be over five feet long and that's extremely long. So actually what happens inside the nucleus is we take our linear DNA and we wind it around special proteins known as histones. And then we basically take the histones, we connect those histones, and we coil them further to create a structure known as the chromatin, which is a very, very condensed version of our linear DNA. So inside the nucleus, the linear DNA is wound around special structural proteins called histones. Combining eight histones forms a structure known as the nucleosome. And these nucleosomes can be wrapped into coils and supercoils of complexes of protein DNA and RNA called chromatin. Now, when the DNA is not actually being used, when we are not transcribing our DNA molecule, it exists in this condensed, supercoiled form. However, to actually read and express, to actually transcribe our DNA molecule, we have to uncoil that section of the DNA. And at any given time in the nucleus of our cell, only a small percentage of the DNA is actually unwound. It exists mostly predominantly in the condensed and supercoiled chromatin stage. 